I am so happy to be able to join you and um, to be able to prepare for this class. I send out um, emails to friends and said, okay, tell me about your gifts of Christmas. And um, I got some, some really tender stories back. And um, I'm going to share a few of those during this presentation. Um, and I just have to tell you, one of those things that happens always when you teach is that, that the, um, the teacher learns more than perhaps the students. I'm going to point out, um, I do have a handout. Um, and if you have questions, please put them in the chat. Um, I um, and I did not put my email on the handout now that I'm thinking about it, but it's um, just Marilyn Thompson, as it's spelled there on the front thing, at gmail.com. And I don't know if you guys know that the G in Gmail really stands for genealogy mail. It's my personal belief. But anyway, that's how it is. Um, first of all, when we're talking about gifts, um, we are talking about hopefully spreading love. And there's a, a wonderful book. It's entitled The Languages of Love. And um, the author um, talked about how we need to learn other people's languages of love. And different languages speak to different people in different ways. And so some people love words of affirmation. They like praise. Um, and so, for example, as you're giving a gift, say, to a grandfather um, of um, thank you notes or things I love about grandpa, those kinds of words of affirmation may be just the gift that he needs. But then after that grandfather dies, those words remain with the children and, and they are passed down. Another language of love is quality time. And so even though you may spend money on people, if their language of love is quality time, time sitting down, talking to them, um, connecting with them, then handing them a book, um, no matter how meticulously researched, uh, doesn't speak a language of love. I still remember I went and, and um, spent hours, hours, hours copying pedigrees and that and gave it to each of my um, nine siblings. And not one of them gave me a thank you note. And I mean, this was, I had to hire a babysitter. I had paid for it and until and about 10 years later. And then my oldest brother retired and he spit, sat down and he typed in all of those pedigree charts into um, the, at that time, family search. And, and um, then came um, the bread cast upon the water. But um, I was wrong to have felt like um, they didn't value what I did, um, realizing that um, the stories and things that came back were the quality time that I got as a result of my gift. Then there are acts of service, and some people, they like you to come in and wash their dishes. They like you to, um, you know, help them to pick out clothes. They like to go shopping with you. They, they want these acts, um, and that is what speaks to them. And maybe they don't need praising. Maybe they don't need um, a lot of quality time, but, but they watch what you're doing to serve them. Um, and then other people do like physical gifts. They, they want the books. They, they want the pictures. They want things that they can touch, and that's validating for them. And then there's other people that um, physical touch is really a part of the language of love. And so as I'm going through these gifts of Christmas today, I want you to be aware of how um, different gifts appeal to different people. And if you, even though a gift may be something you want to get, if it isn't the gift that gives to that person, then you're not really giving a gift of love. And so there's a large variety of gifts. 
The other thing that happens often, as we all know, we, we attend these classes and, and we go, oh, my head is spinning. There are so many ideas and so many things to do. I think I'm just going to go take a nap. Um, but um, if you just feel inspired with one idea or one way to give a gift or um, a resource that you can use later, even not this year, but later on, then this class will have been a success. Um, and so um, one of the first things that you need to be aware of is that gifts that are age appropriate um, and um, a gift of a combined family history um, may not be appreciated by a child, but if you sit down and read it to that child and look at the pictures, all at once it becomes age appropriate. And um, so think of that. Also, adults may enjoy coloring books. Adults may enjoy coloring in coloring books with a child. And um, children can give gifts of family history too. Um, and so um, always be thinking of the child inside of us and not always thinking of the adult that is in the child, um, but um, go ahead and, and um, give those gifts. Um, these are uh, my husband's grandmother and she would go around, she had all of these beautiful uh, Royal Copenhagen plates on the walls, but she didn't just have them on a wall. She would stop and she would take it off the wall and sit down with my children. And she would say, see this courtyard, that's what it looked like when I lived in Denmark. This is my courtyard and the animals lived next to our home. And then she would talk about cutting the Christmas tree. And then she would show them the figurine of the, the two children running away to America, but they're having second thoughts. They're not sure how far away America is. And then um, Richard's um, other mother would sit down and talk about the tea kettle that she got from her grandma. And so these are the stories of things and things have no meaning unless we give a meaning. And so think about um, that as you're giving gifts, it can be in a note, but to actually stop. Um, I know I am an, an artist and I have given Christmas cards that I've done, but often now when I'm handing people the Christmas card, I tell them what I was feeling as I was doing this Christmas card and it changes the whole experience of that card for them. Now, those things that you just saw, photo books that are so cheap and so easy to do now can share your family stories. And so one idea is just to run around the house, take pictures of heirlooms, sit down, write a paragraph about that heirloom and give that as a present. Um, family reunions, um, these photo books, share that with them. And as that becomes um, something that they can put on a table and look at regularly, or even that you can pull out when the children are there or talk about the pictures with teenagers. Oh my goodness, they love to look at themselves in books. And it opens up especially awkward teenagers laughing about and telling you about what they remember about those moments with you. And it connects with our living families. Uh, photo books um, are an easy medium to share items that have meaning with others. Um, we have at our Family History Center, this is um, the Cruiser Book Scanner. Um, it's an, uh, it, um, you can put out your book and it scans it and it reads the characters, the optical characters, and then it saves it as a PDF that can be uploaded to Family Search. Um, I've had people come in and scan a 200 page book. We've turned it into a PDF and uploaded it to Family Search. And then, then they've connected different chapters in the book to different um, ancestors that are in the book. This scanner is available at BYU and 
many family history centers are buying these. They actually aren't that expensive. I, um, there are several letters. They were created for students to use as a, a reading light and as a home scanner. And so they, they start at like a hundred and well, I'm, I'm quoting pre-inflation prices, but about $140 and a really nice one is $170. And, and um, this might be something, if you have a project, it, you might just invest in that um, uh, to have at home. And is what it does is it reads the curve of the page um, and straight flattens out the book. And then there's a foot pedal and so you open up the book and you go click with your foot and then you turn the page and you go click with your foot and you turn the page and you go click with your foot and you turn the page. And um, I remember a missionary coming in with his journals. He must have had about six of them from his mission. And he was in and out within two hours and had all of his missionary journals scanned and turned into PDFs that he could save. Um, this is also being used by people to um, save scrapbooks and that they um, and their kids are so excited because they don't want those big hefty three ring binders on their shelves, but a thin, book, these photo album books is really valuable to them um, that because they can transport them and less is more. I just want to give you an alert um, before you go and start digitizing your family histories, um, make sure you check family search. I know um, I had a couple extra copies of the Bakers and Cooies of Dirt Town and I sent in a text out to my siblings and they said, oh, give it to us, we'll digitize it. And we'll, and I said, stop, stop. I said, it's already digitized. And um, if you want to print a copy or email a, a digital copy or a link and send it to your kids. But these are some of the fun stories that are in this book. And so this year, our family just rediscovered this history um, that my oldest brother got from um, a premier historian in Dirt Town, Tennessee, Dirt Valley, Tennessee. And he shared with the Family History Library in Salt Lake. Let me also add, if you do do um, a family history, a lot of people come up against the idea, well, uh, all of our cousins want a copy of my book. How do I do that? And if you share that book with the church and then they say, oh, I want a copy, you say, well, it's on family search. And I've given permission for anybody to copy or print that book. And then, then they can go ahead and go to work with the books from at, at, that's been uploaded to Family Search. And, and you no longer have the responsibility to try to manage money or printing or that. Um, I wanted to just show this is a, a picture of a, a gal that um, is at our family coming to the Family History Center. And, she just has little folders. She has just set a, a goal to just do certain parts. And then she's going to reprint them in one of these thinner family, his acid free books. And so she just has a set appointment that she shows up for an hour on um, Tuesday morning. And um, it's really amazing how much can be done without the phone. <laughs> without the grandkids arriving um, to be able to, to be able to put together an amazing gift of memories. And I just can't tell you the stories that come back of, of husbands in tears and children that say, I forgot, I forgot um, about that. And so there is really a value in just setting aside a little bit of time to do something like this. Now, um, my friend Michael Robertson, um, he had loved to tell his children stories and read to them. And um, so he decided to gather up all of the interesting stories about their ancestor. And when his cousin Kathleen Willie Terry volunteered to help, he says, yeah, let's do it. And um, so now they have a visual version of this 
book that they can put on iPads, they can put on their phone. And so, for example, when they're traveling or um, when it's bedtime, he can pull these stories out and read these stories. And his big thing he says is, is I, I don't want to be reading them fiction and fairy tales, but I want to be connecting to them. And um, so these, this has been amazingly valuable to him. He um, just emailed it off to a printer online. They arrive, they're printed, they'll give them to him as Christmas also. Um, but he said um, it was those little pieces of time that he set apart in, on a Sunday evening to be able to do this. And of course, as I said about teachers, is that he feels too that he is the richest. Um, published histories. Let's talk about those. Um, published histories, I have two of them here. One is one of those, you know, um, gold embossed title and a red leather, you know, back uh, that looks so beautifully impressive um, and looks like you better treasure this or else. Um, but then next to it is a, a, a little paperback version of my mother did. Um, she just wanted to tell the stories of the, her grandparents that she knew and her parents she knew. And she says, I don't have enough, she was a convert, to put into a thick book. And we said, well, let's just do this. And it's just a paperback. But it sits side by side with this other volume. So do not think you have to do um, these leather volumes and pay great expense, but they still are rich and very valuable. Um, also, as we did my parents' histories, um, we found the grandchildren were really excited about this horizontal version. It's called a, a coffee table um, book that sits out there and, and we will pull it out with our grandkids when we're there and we'll, we'll tell them stories. Of course, the grandsons always like the picture of the tank and the World War II stories. And the girls always like the story that my mother tells of, the, of them dating and falling in love. And, and, um, and but these books um, keep the presence of my parents with us and with our children as they're sitting out there on our coffee table. And similar to what Mike said um, about fairy tales or, you know, um, picture books of other places in the world, your parents and your history is a foreign country to your children. It is a different world that is as fascinating and as interesting to them as these. And so, make that part of their lives. The next thing is coloring books. And um, these coloring, these are drawn by uh, my grandson, Scott. It's a story about how my ancestor was at church and somebody broke in, a robber broke in the house, stole all the money that they had saved to immigrate to America. Oh, it wasn't their house. It was their neighbor's house. And she came crying back and she says, I can't go to America. And our grandfather took his money, some of his money, and gave it to her and the rest of her life. She um, lived where they lived. She moved where they moved because the relationship was so deep, as deep as, as a relative. And so those kind of stories make these ancestors and bring those values to our grandchildren. These are pictures of a coloring book that's been drawn by an adult. Um, and, and they also, you know, don't have to be complicated. It's the line drawings, the simple drawings, and just those little paragraphs that bring value and share your heritage with people. Whoops, I'm going the wrong way. Okay, let's see. Okay, I... Um, this is my friend Sandra Brimhall, um, and they decided to create a story and coloring book for their family. And 
So she gathered, again, interesting stories and wrote them down and decided what she wanted to tell. And then she found a neighbor who is gifted at, at drawing and she gave him the pictures. And you can see how these everyday pictures that you may print up in a book um, have been turned into a coloring book. But along with these pictures are the stories. Um, so for example, this is a, a fun story of her ancestors named Mark Anthony. And he was um, playing truant from school and the policeman stopped him and shoved him up against the wall and said, what's your name? And he says, Mark Anthony. He says, yeah, yeah, yeah. And your mom's Cleopatra. And so, um, of course, they laugh about that. But um, this kind of a story is humorous, but it draws them in and, and it makes them relate to the name of their ancestor, Mark Anthony. And then you can see how they've just taken these photographs and turned them into line drawings. Um, if you have a, someone that's taken a class in Photoshop or art, it's really quite easy to put it through a process that simplifies it. And then you just put a piece of paper over and make a line drawing of a photo and then put a story about that person or tell about their personality or tell about their courtship or, or tell about the sorrow they felt when the person died. Another thing with coloring books is to, um, to find pictures of the towns that they lived in. And then again, just simple line drawings um, of where they lived. Um, and of course, cars. Cars are, um, whenever I help um, a man um, write his history, I say, tell me about the cars that you owned. And it's, they can name every single car often um, that their parents own, the model, the color. Um, and um, so cars have always been a big part of families and to put them into um, a coloring book is just really fun. And then there's those stories of heroic moments when an ancestor had to make a choice and they stood up and they made a choice in a moment that changed the world. And our children need heroes and they can find those heroes in those ancestors. This is a sweet story Sandra wrote. Her um, grandfather had been a missionary and um, they were going to close the mission, and he wrote, and he said, I've, I've given up uh, a part of my youth here, but I will give up a lot more of my youth if you will just leave me here and keep this mission open. And the general authorities listened to his letter, and they changed, and they kept that mission open because of his letter. Okay, now I need to get a Kleenex and and um, move on. Um, another important gift is the gift of food. And um, Family Search, um, as part of Ritz Tech, did a huge feature about how important food um, is and the memories of food and the heritage of food with your family. So this Christmas, as you are um, sitting around with your family at the table, um, start asking questions that help you to tell the recipe stories. Um, so these are some that the Family Search has online. Um, what foods does your family eat on a regular basis? What foods make does your family ask for? I know I asked this the other day. I said, so when you think of home, what is the food you think of that made you happy or comfort food? And, and of course, it was the homemade bread. Uh, it was um, the cookies after they came home from school. Did your parents, grandparents, or loved ones teach you how to make certain foods? Uh, are there foods in your family makes at certain times of the year? Um, so for example, um, 
is Halloween a time when you have chili? Um, I almost have a riot um, with, from my husband if I'm not making chili, you know, at certain times of the year. And, um, and so don't just look at Christmas, but those kind of foods make holidays and make occasions special. Um, and then who likes to cook in your family and ask if, if they've collected family recipes? Um, is there a recipe in your family and all of the extended family knows about? And um, what foods are associated with a certain memory? Um, a special occasion, a special cake. I know I have a daughter-in-law who's born next to um, Thanksgiving. And so we make um, a pie um, for her birthday cake and she loves apple pie. And, and it, it, she says, I really felt loved when your family served um, a, a pumpkin, uh, an apple pie. Who's the oldest person in your family? And ask them if they have recipes to share. Um, they may be nasty. You may never want to make them again, but, but they are a recipe and they have been handed down. And then are there any recipes that is, require special ingredients or skills? And so we have some Danish dumplings that uh, my husband's grandmother had a special dumpling maker made so that she could make those dumplings from Denmark. And so we um, give the kids the recipe and we tell them about how special those dumplings are for our family. Cookbooks. Um, Again, books um, on the, um, you ask around and find out if somebody is a special area that they like to cook and if they want to share um, these books. And nowadays, now that books can be shared digitally as well um, as printed, um, it's so easy to share. But I have found people like a hard copy, um, however you do it. Um, I have a tradition that um, we have a Brineholt family recipe book and whenever a bride came into our family or a new groom, we asked their family to share a recipe in our cookbook. And then we wrote the story of who it is and um, why it is special to their family. Because in my mind, a family tree is it's really a quakey with all of the other trees blending together with those trees. Um, there are companies online, if you um, Google it, that they specialize in painting recipe books and they have templates for you to just paste things in and they will create an index for you and they will print them for you. And um, so if you're feeling intimidated, Gee, not today. Now I'd like to talk about the temple gifts. This is kind of a, a special topic to me um, because we want to make temple going part of the culture of our family. And I want to connect with my children and my grandchildren um, as they experience the temple and they go. So this is um, one of the things that I um, have had for a long time. It's a, um, a temple card holder. And so when my children turn 11 and this is the year that they're going to get their first recommend, then I give them one of these holders to hold and not just their recommend, but also the cards that can be printed out. And there's little dividers in it. There's a baptism, initiatory, endowment, sealing, and then completed for those cards. And is what this does is as the kids get the cards, um, whether they print their own or share them with you, I'm, I have to tell you, my grandkids, I teach them how to do research and they print their own cards. And my husband and I really get kind of frustrated because nobody wants our cards anymore. So it's a real problem. I, I, I hope you guys get that problem. But anyway, um, these now um, I, I put also um, 
just a regular piece of um, a card. And I say, okay, put this person's name and number down on this card in these areas so that you can go back and reprint that card. And when you're getting ready to go to the temple, you can look for that name and number so that you know who's still waiting for you to do these other ordinances. Um, this is, uh, we did this as a Relief Society activity. This is just from Walmart. Um, and it's a coupon holder. It's called a coupon holder wallet. Um, these are some that you can order online for about $9. Um, as I have to tell you, as I've given them to my nieces, then my sister-in-laws all want one. And then when I give it to the sister-in-laws, then when their children come from out of town, they steal the sister-in-laws. And then, you know, everybody just wants one of these. And it's really been a fun Relief Society activity to do. I did make up labels um, that I, um, it's, this is just regular address labels and I print off a sheet and then I can make them up pretty quick. Um, but using a, just a Sharpie pen as a, um, an activity, you know, that's okay too. Also, um, um, as they go to the temple, they get that first temple. You can give them a temple recommend holder. You can buy these at White Elegance. Um, their stores locally have closed because of COVID, but, but you can still order them online and order a, a handkerchief with all the temple dedications that are coming up. Hey, get, get their own temple um, handkerchief that has their name monogrammed on it. Another idea, my father um, used to give us um, this coin purse that's there on the left and full of uh, coins. And they're just these inexpensive coin holders you'd pick up at the bank and that. And um, he would say, you know, that's to buy us lunch um, at the temple or if we needed to rent clothing or anything at the temple, then then he we had a coin purse to put in our our temple bag. Um, also, uh, my sister took and made a cute little um, package like this. And in it, she put gum and certs. And then in the middle, it looks like, you know, Kleenex, but it's white socks. And um, so um, for the men and the women, a handkerchief, white socks, certs, and gum. Um, and, and that was your gift for um, the going to the temple. And, and it was just so fun and so thoughtful of her. Um, another idea is um, restaurants near the temple, wherever um, the individual you're talking to, um, put a little money on it. And like my now that the um, cafeterias are closing in the temples, um, say, hey, I think you two should go on a date. And here is um, something to just help you out to remember to do that. Also, um, everybody likes new. Um, and, and sometimes that's fun to have a new bag, have a new purse. Um, there are different styles um, at any age. Uh, my mother, she was um, in her late 80s. And I said, you know, mom, maybe we should get you some new temple clothes and a new temple bag. And I, <laughs> I had no idea how excited she was to be up to date and to give up her old black bag um, and to have a cute little dress to wear. So um, that's an idea. Okay, so now I want to move on to activities that connect the family here on Earth of the gifts. And I have to tell you, the Family History Guide is the go-to source for ideas. And, and um, if you haven't used the Family History Guide, they, they collect information from everywhere, from blogs, from the church, uh, family church site, family search blogs, um, and they organize them. So I, I see the guide is a guide to finding things. And so 
there in the center of this picture, I um, let me just, I'll use a little um, pointer here to, to kind of circle it. I, whoops, it's not circling. Okay, well, I'm gonna learn how to do that on another day. Um, but um, there's a little um, search. And so if you click that little uh, magnifying glass and then type in a topic, then there comes the wealth of information. And so the one that, oh, now it's going to highlight. Okay. Oh, no, there. Okay. And so I put in Christmas and um, this is, and Tanner suggested this, and these are the things that come up. Um, there's a, a wonderful life party, memories in the making, how to to watch the show and get everybody to share their lives or tell each other how um, they are important to you and their life means something to you. Um, there are um, other ideas that are in there. Um, they have service ideas and links to the service ideas that can help you to, to bring your family together to spend time um, serving others as a gift. Um, in our family, um, we keep saying that um, I don't want your money, um, I want your time. And I would rather you use your money for serving others than to give me something. Um, and so that's really an important thing. Um, this is the scripture, Luke 12, 15, a man's life consists not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. And these memories are incredible gifts that you can give to your family. They also have ideas for gifts, crafts that you can do together. Um, using pictures, make a wreath, um, and they have links to pages. There's one where you get out grandma's fabrics and make chains for the Christmas tree. Um, just really fun craft ideas and directions on how to do it. And then ideas about lighting the world and stories about how to do that calendaring and the gifts of that. And then they have activities that are really fun. This activity is to use Google Maps to actually travel to places in the world where your family lives. And although this picture has children gathered around and um, a dad perhaps telling them about this place. Um, I know I love bringing up in Orsley, England, the, the house that my grandfather built. And he heard his sister say, um, tell him that she'd passed away um, in that house. And so it's fun to bring those up. But my mother and my aunts and my uncles get as big a kick out of this because they just need a, a tour guide to be able to do this. This is um, links to some games. This is really a fun game. Um, it's called Jigsaw Puzzle Light, and um, it's something that could be loaded onto an iPad or um, uh, um, your computer. And is what you do is you, first of all, download the game, okay? And then um, click exact and start it. And then it opens up and it has you download pictures that turn into jigsaw puzzle. And my little five-year-old grandsons like putting together these people's faces. And then we talk about who they are and who's in the picture. And um, then they can click on and you can, the smallest ones are 35 pieces or bigger, you know, a 60 piece pit and one. And so here's our family reunion with all of those people in it. And so pulling these people together, it, it's just kind of a fun activity. Another game they have in there is to use, um, this is an easily printed pedigree chart um, that you can lay on the table and then you have you know say so many pieces 
of whatever yummy you want. And um, the person goes out of the room and everybody agrees who is Grandpa Pete. And, um, or, you know, you can say Uncle Pete, or you can say who's Aunt Myrtle or, or whatever. And then when they come in, they point to a, a candy and they pick it up to eat it. And when they reach that person that everybody's, then everyone yells at him, don't eat Grandpa Pete. Um, and um, so what a, a fun game to be able to share or give as a gift. Let me also talk about sending letters of love. And even children can do this. I know I started out talking about letters of appreciation are a great gift. And um, we had all of the grandchildren, we gave them little half sheet pages and say, draw a picture of something you have done with grandpa or you like about grandpa. And they're amazing, beautiful colored pictures. And we put them together as a PDF and put it online at Family Search. Um, but those children, when they saw their their letters, um, they said, I remember, I remember. Um, I also um, encourage my children to write me, my grandchildren. And when I write them back, I put money in the envelope. And this is hope. Hope is eight years old. And um, because her siblings, of course, were getting these envelopes, the older brother was saving up for a Nintendo. And so he was my one of my most faithful writers until he got enough money for his Nintendo. But I'm sure he'll find another reason to write me. But this is, you know, Grandma, I, I love you. Um, I want a dog. They can't have a dog where they're living right now. I love my friends. I love my school. But this last little line, it says, I want to be you when I grow up. <laughs> and um, wow. Um, I, I may send money back to her, but the gift that she gave me was greater than anything. So there are gifts that money can buy. Um, and so um, I'm not going to run away from that. I'm just going to mention a few that you might think of. Not everybody in the world has free access to Ancestry.com and MyHeritage, and it is on sale this time of year. Also, there are some databases that are not included in the LDS um, version. And so you might just take a look at um, perhaps giving a gift to a subscription or to a magazine. Um, I, oh, I had an image in here. Oh, okay, he's coming. Yeah, this one came first. Also, pedigree charts. Whoa, these are amazing what they can do with um, a database um, and that you can give. And these are really good gifts for, um, to, and it's neat to go into your family and see how they have just even simple pedigrees on the wall to help children to know who they came from and who these people are. Um, my only thing about pedigrees is when I go into family search and I can't get anybody to change a certain line because it's printed in the pedigree on their wall. <laughs> so I always um, have to laugh because I say, you know, and tell for their evidence this is what we believe or know. Um, so, okay. So now um, let's talk about Family Tree Magazine. This, um, when you start subscribing to it around Christmas time, they say, oh, if you renew again, we'll give you a gift subscription for anybody you want. And so I, um, it's kind of fun for me every year, I pick out who's gonna get the gift subscription along with my subscription. And I have to say this is, a magazine has survived in the difficult market of magazines because um, there is value to it. And then 
um, when I have been directors at family history centers and that, then I have just given um, my uh, magazines after I have read through them um, to the family history center for people to take um, when they want it or are ready to go home. Um, there's a digital version and a, um, a printed version and and I, I like both, you know, sometimes I want to read in the car and sometimes I want to go back and take a look um, at that subscription that was about German research that I don't do German research, but boy, I, I want to be able to, to share that with people. About this time of year also, um, we have DNA tests um, that people are getting um, a really good book is the guide to DNA tests. This is one on my shelf. I, uh, it's by Blaine Bettler, um, that I keep going to, um, I, it's like a foreign country, a foreign language, and I keep going back to it because this one really helps me to understand, um, what's going on and, and how to be effective. And of course, we have our, our good basics, evidence explained, and then there are fun ones, 30, 300 questions to ask your parents before it's too late. Um, and if someone is doing family history, they may value this book. Um, I put a list in our handout of just some basics, um, books that um, I have on my shelf that I go back to. Um, I, I, you know, we could sit and talk wildfire, but this is another tip. Um, oh, this wasn't supposed to cover up the writing, but that's okay. we'll fix that after the thing's over. But um, if you are researching a particular state or a particular country, Family Search has lists of, um, of um, fur for the reading. And um, so you go to their page. So for example, if I put in Ireland and on the right hand, there's a column and it says, you know, um, parish records, maps, um, military records, yada, yada. And then at the very bottom, it'll have this list. And I remember I gave my husband a, um, a history of England that was on this list. And when we go out socially, he says, yeah, I read this book on England. It just changed everything, what I thought. Um, and so it's fun to be able to give a book that changes how we think and what we know and that we can access to. This is, when you click on that little link, this is what it would look like. Um, it's a list of books um, that are kind of um, basics or foundational books to doing research. And then um, is the gift of being able to travel. I know Rayanne, uh, when I asked her, um, she gave us a story about her husband gave her a trip back to, to Natticoke, Pennsylvania, where her family was for Christmas. And she says that that was one of the most amazing gifts that anyone could have given her is the ability to travel. Um, I have family members that have taken advantage of my heritage, does tours to homelands. Um, they went to Denmark and they had been corresponding with a little lady that was 80 years old and, and they happened to be in that town. And then they let them have time to wander around and they found her address and, and they knocked on the door and nobody came to it. And they went around back and and then, and a little lady was coming out with her hands full of trash. And they said, do you know, um, and they told her her name and she says, I'm her. And then um, they only had about a half an hour and she, they said, you didn't respond. We were worried you died. And she says, well, it was bad news. And I didn't want to tell you that that house isn't there anymore. And so, um, I didn't know how to tell you. <laughs> and so then at the end of their visit, she said, I wish we had more time. And they wish they had had more time too. And you will feel that, but there is something about standing in the place where your ancestors have been. And, 
and um, think of them coming. So I'm going to end um, this fun time we've had together. I wish you guys were talking to me or talking back or um, we could have lots of fun telling your stories and hearing your stories. I love to hear other people's stories and um, I love other people and people who love family history, but I'm going to tell you the story of my friend, Marilyn Ellis. Um, and um, Marilyn um, was married and they lived in California and her father was not a member. And um, so her father said, um, I want you to find out our Swedish name. And she said, our Swiss name. And she says, I didn't have any training. And I'm just a young mother with a young family. And my husband works out of town all the time. And she says, I said, dad, I don't know how. And um, her father said, I know you can do it. So she had so much on her plate. She felt so overwhelmed. But when he said that, she knew this was important to him. So then shortly after that, her husband was transferred to Utah. And um, so she started to make trips up to the Family History Library in Salt Lake. And, um, and so she would um, take um, and have a, a list in her hand and a prayer in her heart. And that prayer in her heart, she said, is something she says, I, I wish I could tell everybody go with a prayer in your heart. Don't think this is all about you. And don't think it's about what you can do or not do or about your skills. Um, that prayer in your heart enables the Lord to help you do what you couldn't do otherwise. Um, she said as she was in the, the began. The, um, going up and down the aisles, she would feel a little voice directing her, uh, look at this. Um, she stopped and she looked at a book and, and, um, and that said, no, go back to the index. She's getting ready to put it on the shelf and she pulled it out and the, the family name wasn't there. And, and she says, look at the first names. So she looked at the first names and there was her grandfather's first name. And then she, the last name was totally different. He changed it when he came to, uh, from his Swiss name. And um, it matched up the dates and the names. And then when she went to the church records, there was the marriage to her grandmother. And um, she found her father's name. But also at the same time, um, there was a, another aunt who, um, before this, I, I've kind of jumped ahead that um, she had, didn't, you know, she says, I, I'll find you and your family just as soon as I finish researching our family. And, and the voice says, no, you need to do mine now. And so she did, um, she found her and um, then she says, as soon as she did, then everything started to open up. And she says, I believe that is the angel that was on my shoulder directing me. So then she told her father, I, I'm taking um, your names to the temple. And he said, okay, all right. And, um, and so they, when they went to the temple, um, 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 they were doing the names and she ended up um, getting this, this, um, aunt, I guess she would be, um, name each time she knelt to be the daughter when she knelt to be the spouse and, and sealed to husbands. And when she knelt to be the mother, she says, each time it came around, I, I got to do that work. And, um, so she said, I, I know, I know she knew me and I knew her. So then, th then she said that her son, when he went on his mission, um, told her grandfather, he says, why are you doing this? And they would explain about their testimony and why they were going. And then when her second son went on his mission, her father came to him and said, I think I need to be baptized. 
And uh, she said to be able to call the mission president and say, tell my son that his grandfather was to be baptized. And she feels like her father's ancestors had changed her father's heart in a way that she never could have. So um, Marilyn says we, we need to pray and we need to ask for that assistance because they can do for us what we cannot do ourselves. And there are family members here, seen and unseen, rejoicing. She said her when her husband set her father apart, he said to him, he said, there are family members here and unseen and unseen rejoicing in your baptism. And she said, I always felt that those members on the other side were watching over our family. And so, okay, all right, we'll go get our cup of hot chocolate and sit down and, and think about um, what gifts we can give. Uh, but yet at the same time, remember that amazing gift that was given to us, not just us, but to the Savior, by the Savior, the resurrection, the redemption, and the celebration that we have. So thank you so much for, for this journey that I've been able to take because you are here and, and I hope you have a great Christmas.